Bible reading for July 2nd. We're reading from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. The Old Testament reading is from the second book of Kings, chapter 20, verse 1, to chapter 22, verse 2. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept with bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. And three days from now, you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. And I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, Make an ointment from figs. So Hezekiah's servants spread the ointment over the boil, and Hezekiah recovered. Meanwhile, Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, What sign will the Lord give to prove that he will heal me and that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? Isaiah replied, this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. Would you like the shadow on the sundial to go forward 10 steps or backward 10 steps? The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied, so that would be easy. Make it go 10 steps backward instead. So Isaiah the prophet asked the Lord to do this. And he caused the shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick. Hezekiah received the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, what did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord. The time is coming when everything in your palace all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good. For the king was thinking, At least... There will be peace and security during my lifetime. The rest of the events of in Hezekiah's reign, including the extent of his power and how 
he built a pool and dug a tunnel to bring water into the city, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. Hezekiah died, and his son Manasseh became the next king. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother was Hepzibah. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the detestable practices of the pagan nations that the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He rebuilt the pagan shrines his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He constructed altars for Baal and set up an Asherah pole, just as King Ahab of Israel had done. He also bowed before all the powers of the heavens and worshipped them. He built pagan altars in the temple of the Lord, the place where the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. He built these altars for all the powers of the heavens in both courtyards of the Lord's temple. Manasseh also sacrificed his own son in the fire. He practiced sorcery and divination, and he consulted with mediums and psychics. He did much that was evil in the Lord's sight, arousing his anger. Manasseh even made a carved image of Asherah and set it up in the temple, the very place where the Lord had told David and his son Solomon, My name will be honored forever in this temple and in Jerusalem, the city I have chosen from among all the tribes of Israel. If the Israelites will be careful to obey my commands, all the laws my servant Moses gave them, I will not send them into exile from this land that I gave their ancestors. But the people refused to listen, and Manasseh led them to do even more evil than the pagan nations that the Lord had destroyed when the people of Israel entered the land. Then the Lord said through his servants, the prophets, King Manasseh of Judah has done many detestable things. He is even more wicked than the Amorites who lived in this land before Israel. He has caused the people of Judah to sin with his idols. So this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the heirs of those who hear about it will tingle with horror. I will judge Jerusalem by the same standard I used for Samaria and the same measure I used for the family of Ahab. I will wipe away the people of Jerusalem as one wipes a dish and turns it upside down. Then I will reject even the remnant of my own people who are left, and I will hand them over as plunder for their enemies. For they have done great evil in my sight, and have angered me ever since their ancestors came out of Egypt. Manasseh also murdered many innocent people, until Jerusalem was filled from one end to the other with innocent blood. This was in addition to the sin that he caused the people of Judah to commit, leading them to do evil in the Lord's sight. The rest of the events in Manasseh's reign and everything he did, including the sins he committed, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Manasseh died, he was buried in the palace garden, the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Ammon became the next king. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem two years. His mother was Meshulemeth, the daughter of Haruz from Jotba. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father Manasseh had done. He followed the example of his father, worshipping the same idols his father had worshipped. He abandoned the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and he refused to follow the Lord's ways. Then Ammon's own officials conspired against him and assass assassinated him in his palace. But the people of the land 
killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and they made his son Josiah the next king. The rest of the events in Ammon's reign and what he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Josiah became the next king. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah from Boscath. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. So that's the end of the reading from the Old Testament. We'll continue from there tomorrow for the Old Testament. Now, the reading from the New Testament. Acts chapter 21, verse 18 to 36. The next day, Paul went with us to meet with James, and all the elders of the Jerusalem church were present. After greeting them, Paul gave a detailed account of of the things God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. After hearing this, they praised God, and then they said, You know, dear brother, how many thousands of Jews have also believed, and they all follow the law of Moses very seriously. But the Jewish believers here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their backs on the laws of Moses. They've heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or follow other Jewish customs. What should we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. Here's what we want you to do. We have four men here who have completed their vow. Go with them to the temple and join them in the purification ceremony paying for them to have their heads ritually shaped. Then everyone will know that the rumors are all false and that you yourself observe the Jewish laws. As for the Gentile believers, they should do what we already told them in a letter. They should abstain from eating food offered to idols, from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. So Paul went to the temple the next day with the other men. They had already started the purification ritual. So he publicly announced the date that their vows should, would end and sacrifices would be offered for each of them. The seven days were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused a mob against him. They grabbed him yelling, Men of Israel, help us. This is the man who preaches against our people everywhere and tells everybody to to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple and even defies this holy place by bringing in Gentiles. For earlier that day, they had seen him in the city with Trophimus, a Gentile from Ephesus, and they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. The whole city was rocked by these accusations, and a great riot followed. Paul was grabbed and dragged out of the temple, and immediately the gates were closed behind him. As they were trying to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman regiment that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately called out his soldiers and officers and ran down among the crowd. When the mob saw the commander and the troops coming, They stopped beating Paul. Then the commander arrested him and ordered him bound with two chains. He asked the crowd who he was and what he had done. Some shouted one thing and some another. Since he couldn't find out the truth in all the uproar and confusion, he ordered that Paul be taken to the fortress. As Paul reached the stairs, the mob grew so violent The soldiers had to lift him on their shoulders to protect him. 
and the crowd followed behind, shouting, Kill him, kill him. So we'll continue tomorrow on that story. Now the reading from the Psalms, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that, ha- that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that was the reading from the Psalms. And now from Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9 to 10. A lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. So that ends the Bible reading for today, July 2nd. May the Lord God Almighty bless the reading and the hearing of his word. And I pray that he will give us understanding. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.